Hey, Tubes. Hey, I want to show you something that's uh, kind of interesting. Uh, we got this oscilloscope at work, and it just pretty much failed uh, calibration. We sent it to the lab, and we got it back, and we ended up with this uh, uh, fail, uh, test 4, fail, 0, 2. Right now, in this case, it's 11. Um, so I did some work on it, played around with it. Uh, I went ahead, and I followed the uh, diagnostic tools all the way down I, I just got out of it here and there is the dreaded question marks right there after pa after power up which tells you that your uh, RAM has been slicked or is uh, faulty and so I followed the diagnostic right here it says you know turn on your power do you have a fault yeah I do so you just keep on following the the prompts down to the bottom of the page there and it tells you to to go to uh, part two circle two there so then we'd go ahead and go down the page to uh, circle two and uh, you follow the prompts over there as soon as we get there I'll show you all right here we are um, yeah so it asks you what the error codes are zero one test two test three test four which is one I have and then it asks you uh, you know which one is it and you follow it on down uh, and it comes down to U2460 and recalibrate. The thing is, is I went ahead and followed this and after I replaced it, uh, I didn't know that uh, that battery right there on the right I just pointed to uh, is what actually holds the power on that. So if you pull that chip out, uh, there's no power to hold the cal constants. So what I'm going to do here is I'm uh, going to go ahead and I'm going to pull the uh, power cord off to let you know it's unpowered. And then I'm going to show you how to test that battery. Uh, just basically you go to the top of that diode and, uh, and that resistor there. And then uh, using the schematics, uh, I went ahead and found out it was on pin 28 and you get 3.45 volts. Well. The drop is actually because of the diode, so otherwise it would read 3.6, but because of the diode drop, you're going to lose a, a little bit there. So anyways, uh, what I'm going to do is recalibrate it, so continue to follow along with this little series, and hopefully uh, I can remove that. And doing some research, I found out that uh, there's some hidden steps in the CAL procedure that aren't in the book, so I'm going to try to do those. Uh, all this is going to be time dependent on whether the boss deems it necessary or not to go ahead and keep this scope. Now, the reason I'm making the videos is because I want to document this in case I get another one of these scopes and I know how to do it and I'll know the quirks in the uh, procedure that everybody talks about in uh, EV, EEV blog and a couple other websites that talk about the quirks. So this is just the start of the series. Hopefully I'll get to finish it. So far, the boss says go ahead and do it because we've got several of these scopes in house and we had another one just fail uh, a couple days ago. It wasn't for the same thing, but uh, obviously if the company's not going to spend a lot of money in replacing us with newer scopes, we're going to have to start replacing or repairing, I should say, uh, the current scopes on hand. We've got several of these in the shop right now and some TDS uh, 600 series scopes and and some uh, TDS 3000 series scopes. I've already repaired two of those and uh, it's just in one of these so it looks like we're gonna have to keep them for a while so somebody's got to learn how to fix them so he's allowing me to invest the time and go ahead and do this but uh, you know money talks and if it gets to be too laborious and learning how to do it and fixing them uh, I'll have to drop the series which I don't hope I uh, which I hope I don't have to do because um, obviously there's some good information there for people so y'all have a good one please follow along in the series god bless you and uh keith on you out bye